this morning to talk to the people. I'm going to make a few questions, and if you don't mind, I'll make them to you, and then I'll translate them to Spanish so you have a time to think about your answer. I just want to say thank you very much for having me. I'm so delighted to be here and have the, have the opportunity to talk to actors and other people. Que estaba contenta de estar aquí con nosotros. Yo voy a hacer unas preguntas que nos hemos preparado, pero obviamente esto es un encuentro de, de mi amiga Seguri. Eh, con vosotros, o sea que en el momento que queráis hacer alguna pregunta, por favor, que no sea cuál es tu color favorito. Eso se lo iba a preguntar yo y no me han dejado. What is the difference in terms of your, your craft when you work in a film, a normal film with normal sets, or a CGI film where you don't know what's around you, you have to completely trust whatever someone says is happening behind you? And how do you prepare for that? How do you prepare to play a teenage blue creature? <laughs> Well, I actually treat them exactly the same. It takes the same amount of preparation for me, uh, the physical work and the uh, emotional work. With Avatar, luckily, James Cameron has a screen off to the side where you can, you can see a roughed out version of your 14-year-old self. Um, and how she relates to other adults and how she relates to the environment. So, uh, and you could, could have a playback, although I don't watch it. So, I kind of don't uh, acknowledge a difference because I think you, you have to do that work, the real work, even more because there's going to be stuff like that. And I'm lucky when I saw the alien, I usually had my friend Tom Woodruff in an alien suit doing it. I didn't have to trust that they put the right size alien, because what I see when actors have to do Star Wars and stuff is they say they're close, but they end up maybe sometimes looking too close for you to actually believe. So I think you have to have something in front of you, and I would always ask for that. I need something, even if it's a potted palm, to, so I understand the difference uh, in the space. Um, you know, the trilogy of Alien, Ghostbusters, Avatar, I mean, sci-fi, sci um, it has a great weight in your filmography. What, what is it that you like from that? I, I see this, I didn't know that, but they called you the queen of sci-fi, which is a great title to have. <laughs> Uh, uh, when you do a film like Alien, you don't expect, in those days there were never any sequels. It happened to be very successful and make sequels, and you have to do them, I guess if you're lucky. Same thing with Ghostbusters, we never imagined keep it going, and same thing, well Avatar, you know, we probably knew he wanted to keep going, but I like sci-fi because I feel, especially for the younger generation, but really for all of us, that it's always relevant because it takes place in the future. And the subject of science fiction, as Jim Cameron says, is the exploration of what it means to be human, which I find is a very compelling subject. I've actually not ever tried to do science fiction. Queen of science fiction, to me, leaves out a lot of the other work I've done. <laughs> I've mostly done the other work, but the science fiction I've done, if, if Ghostbusters is such a thing, I consider it a comedy. But um, it's just been very successful, so it looks like that's been a goal. It's an accident, a lucky accident. Um, you always uh, played really, really strong female characters, even in a time when they weren't that common, like Ripley or Goodall in, in Goblin of the Mist. They were very powerful women. Ha, um, do you feel the 
things going to change in the way women are being portrayed in films? Yes, I do know. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, thank goodness. I think in the old days, Hollywood used to mainly concentrate on films that would be popular with young white men between 18 and 21. Um, and I think they finally understood that uh, the audience is comprised of all generations and a huge number of women. And so we, you know, our stories are populated with many more women. And what I've noticed in the last 10 years, I used to be sent scripts where the older woman was a caricature, a joke, and that's no longer happening. There are wonderful older actresses in my generation, and I think they know that we're going to come through and have experience. So I feel that it's, it's, it's changed a lot and it can change a lot more. I think there was a great, uh, a great uh, inspiration here in Spain with Almodovar's movies, his concentration on women and their situations and their interactions that's been very inspiring for American filmmakers and American audiences. Um, you were talking yesterday about when you started, you were working as, as an assistant to Ingrid Berman in the theatre. And I was thinking when, I, when, when they told me, can you come and do this? And I was really excited. And I said, what, what can I ask her? And I said, what would you have asked Ingrid Berman if you, well, you did have a chance to talk to her a lot, but what, what question did you have? that she answered and gave you a glimpse of the truth. I was too shy to ask her anything like that. I was a tiny peon stage manager. Um, we, did, we did talk, I still have gifts she gave me. She was so generous, she, um, tiny gifts, you know, that she would give to the whole crew. Um, the one thing she really talked to me about was height. She would make me stand with our backs together because she was in, insistent that I was taller than she was, maybe by an inch, but every night we'd have to do this, and she'd go, you see, I am much shorter than you. And, and so she was very charming, and I remember the first night in Boston, because we toured America, she looked out, she looked out at a little hole from backstage, and this was 1975 or something like that, when the theater was still a formal occasion. Not so much anymore in America, unfortunately. People wear shorts and, you know. But she looked out and she went, oh, they are wearing turtlenecks. <laughs> it was like a disappointment to her. Um, I'm going to take this opportunity to ask you something that, for me, is the most challenging part of being an actress, which is how do you live, how do you deal with the time between job and job? That how do you feel, you know, because sometimes if you get too excited about something and then you have to drop it, it's very frustrating. So you can't really engage with anything full-heartedly. Um, I guess that I like, I like the intensity of the work where you're, you really don't think of anything else, but I also like lying fallow so that you can, you know, build back up again for the next thing. Um, I think it's harder to do a short job, to come into a job that's been going do your two days and then get out again. Um, because you can't, you know, kind of compose it like a piece of music. So I, I understand that that's hard. Um, again, I just prepared exactly the same way and then, uh, and then I kind of run back to my life um, and try to enjoy that. 
with my husband of 40 years who's down there. Eh, no sé si tenéis alguna pregunta. Aprovechemos estos momentos. Yo creo que una mano ahí. Mira, ahora te acercan el micrófono. Bueno, buenos días. Eh, muchísimas gracias, Josefina eh, Valladolid. Eh, espero que estés muy contenta por recibir eh, la estatuilla. Y yo lo que quiero preguntar es que nuestra actriz más famosa, que es Concha Velasco, eh, quiso ser actriz desde pequeñita. Entonces, me gustaría saber si tú siempre quisiste ser actriz, ser actriz perdón, o lo decidiste en nuestra Gracias. I did not decide young. My parents had both, uh, were both in show business. My father was a pioneer in tele live television. My mother was an, an English actress. Um, I, I had great reverence for what they had accomplished. It never occurred to me that I would be able to accomplish anything. So, in fact, even when I was working with Miss Bergman, I was right out of drama school where they had told me I had no talent and I shouldn't be in the business. You know, art school can be pretty mean. It's filled with people who tell you you can't do what you want. Um, but I was stubborn. I didn't want them to win. So I, I kept working with my friends. And eventually, But really, in my mid-twenties, I thought, okay, I think I can make a living doing acting. But I certainly didn't have, I certainly didn't go, someday I'll be an actor. I never had the confidence to dream like that. Um, I thought I might be a journalist or a, a choreographer. I, I thought I was much better at those things. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, um, you worked with, with Bayona and Rodrigo Cortez here in Spain. Um, how do, how, do you notice a big difference between, well, you've worked in so many countries. Do you notice a big difference between di different countries and different cinematographers and the way they work? I notice a big difference. You know, they were such interesting filmmakers, and Rodrigo Cortez is very serious and a very, very specific idea of how to tell his story. Um, and it was a great experience working uh, with him. Um, and with Bayona, you know, we, I'm still astonished that I got that part because she was supposed to be English. Um, but you know, Bayona is interesting because he loves all kinds of films and he sees everything. And I'm really amazed that he's one of the most versatile storytellers I've ever worked with. And I feel his, his movie, um, uh, Society of the Snow, which I was a bit afraid to see knowing the grim story. And in fact, he made a film of such delicacy and such respect for what these young men went through, the decisions they had to make. I was completely surprised and uplifted by the film. Um, and so uh, I do think that the European experience of making a film is, is more intimate. The crews are smaller. They've all read the script. Everyone's alive, um, you know, and uh, sometimes in America, the, you know, you don't even meet all the crew. It's, it's a much, much larger crew, uh, often, uh, depending on whether it's an indie or a big movie. So I love the experience of working um, in Europe. I also think your unions are much better. And um, your hours are, are civilized. You might actually be able to have dinner when you finish, which never happens in America. You never get out before nine or ten. 
And um, so it's nice to be able to have a life and then also work in this business. Me acaba de decir por el primer año que nos queda hacer una pregunta. Así que lo siento muchísimo porque yo me pasaría aquí toda la mañana. Pero nos queda una pregunta y ya nos tenemos que ir. I really need to ask you about the uh, and how to refer to the two of the first and What were your thoughts back in the day? I mean, when you trust the people the second one, when you saw it would be so different from the first, going from a horror movie to a lot more action and all that. Which one would you enjoy filming the most, and which one is your personal favorite? Um. It's true, I had no idea they were going to do a sequel to Alien. In those days, we just didn't do sequels. I was working in France uh, with Daniel Lee, and um, something about this enormous script that really was on every page. And uh, I thought, well, how odd that they didn't mention this to me since it's going in the fall. Um, but I love the script, you know. I love the script of the first one. It's like a, you know, a kind of haunted house. The second one is like a roller coaster ride, and that's very much Jim. Jim met with me when I came back to America to see if I wanted any changes. But his structure was so excellent, and his all the characters. I thought it was just an, an, an equally amazing script and a, a great sort of operatic role for Ripley. So um, I've worked with such good directors on the whole Alien series, and I think that was part of the charm of it for me and maybe the audience was that every next director tried to outdo what the earlier director had done. Which is my favorite? Thank you for your question. <laughs> so now you want to say something because this is the end of the event. I wish we had more time. I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, I'm in shock that I'm getting this wonderful award from Spain. I have loved working here and, um, and so it means so much to me. Um, and I wish we had more time uh, to talk more about our wonderful industry. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Leonor, for, for asking such entertaining questions. And thank you, Carlos, for again doing such a good job translating my nonsense into Spanish.